Beautiful animations can make apps more interesting and we want to look here at different animations, a slide animation and also at the end a rotation animation. This video is sponsored by Invoice Ninja. Invoice Ninja is one of the largest open source platforms for invoicing. If you search for something to manage your invoices with Flutter and handle also your online payments, this service might be something for you. And to get started with this Invoice Ninja plugin, you find the link in the description box of this video. If you are new here, subscribe to my channel and make sure to watch this video till the end. We want to get started here with a rotation animation by 360 degrees. Therefore, I have created a rotation box widget and here we want to add an animation controller and an animation. And now we need to initialize both of these and therefore I put here some init state inside and then we initialize our controller. And here inside you can then set how long this animation should last. So in this case for 3 seconds. Then we also add here this resync property and we also add here the single ticker provider state mixin to our state level. To start our animation we call on our controller repeat and this will then repeat the animation all the time. And now we want to actually create the real animation. So we create here a tree animation and then you can set here a begin value and an end value. And this is here zero degrees and at the end we reach then 360 degrees. After it you call simply here animate and put here your animation controller instance inside. And that's everything for the init state method. We also create a dispose method where we clean our controller again up. And now we simply go to our build method and here inside we create our animated builder. And with this one we can create complex animations and we need to set here first of all the animation. And here we simply put the animation instance inside which we have created and initialized here in our init state method. And this animation gives us every time here a value between 0 and 360 degrees. And now we simply want to actually build the animation and therefore we call here transform rotate with which you can rotate widgets. And then we put here our rotation inside, in our case our animation dot value and this will then return here one of these values from 0 to 360 degrees. And then we put here our child inside and this child we want to create right now and we create it here not inside of it because of performance optimization. So always put here all the things within the child property which don't change and the other things what is animated can be put here then inside of the builder method. All right, and we want to simply create a red container and we also give it some width and height and that's all what we need to do here. And now you have your container which simply rotates by 360 degrees and it repeats all the time so it doesn't stop again. If you want to have this animation faster or slower you can also change here this duration. So for example if I put your higher value inside then the animation will be slower and you see here the animation is much slower now. Let's go forward and create right now a transition animation. To create the slide transition I simply create here a new slide transition widget and I simply copied and pasted everything from the first rotation box and this is what we want to modify now to create our slide transition. And what we want to change here is the screen so we want to put here minus one and zero inside because our animation should start here at the left side which is minus one and zero is later the center of our application. And then we go here down to our build method which we want to change right now. Instead of this transform rotate we want to simply call transform and then we replace this here by a transform. And here you can simply call matrix4 and translation and this will then do the translation on the x coordinate, on the y coordinate and on the z coordinate. And we only want to change right now the x coordinate. Within our builder we get then the width of our screen and then we take this width and multiply it by the animation value and this animation value is the value between minus 1 and 0. And by this x value then is the translation done in our application. And now if we hot restart our application then you see we have here this slide transition and it is repeating all the time. 
and it will always stop here in the middle and then it will repeat again. However, what we want to create right now is that it stops here in the middle for some time and then it goes further and do the next animation till the end of the screen. And now we simply take here this trim animation and put here instead a start animation method inside. And here inside of the start animation method, we simply put then again our tree animation inside. And here inside we create now two cases. So we want to have the first animation and the second animation. And therefore I create here boolean field is first. And the first animation is every time if we simply start here with our method, then the animation is initially null. And then we create here our animation. Therefore it is the first animation. Or the first animation is also if we have completed the last animation, which will end later at the value of one. And then it is also switching again to the first animation. Now we create here the first case. So if it is first, then we want to simply put here this animation inside, which we have right now. And we also have the else case where we create our second animation. And this animation is only here different in our begin and end value. So this time we don't have here minus one and zero inside. It will start here at the center and then it will go here till the end to the right side. And lastly, we call here the controller reset and forward, which will always start our animation again. And then we also don't need to call here anymore on our controller repeat. So this will always do also the repeat instead. Now you see we have here every time a linear animation. So the animation takes always the same time. And what we want to do is we want to change it. Therefore we create here a curved animation and inside we put our controller, our animation controller, and also we put here a curve inside so that it is not here doing this linear animation with the same speed every time. And now you simply copy this name and put it here inside instead of the controller. And the last thing is to add to both animations a status listener and therefore we create here a listen animation method later and we also add it here to our second animation. Now let's create this method listen animation and here we get every time the animation status and this has for example here a field called animation status completed. So if our first animation is completed then we want to switch to the second animation and then we call here the remove status listener on our first animation and here we put then the method name inside and this will then simply remove here the listener otherwise it will always listen here for the first animation and it will never end. And what we also want to do is to call here the start animation and this will then switch the animation from the first animation later to the second animation. It creates again here a listen animation status listener which then again later calls the start animation and then it's always doing a loop and here we have then our second animation and then it is switching again to the first animation. And now we can see here that he is doing the first animation to the center point and then he is later switching here to our second animation and now he is doing our second animation. And then he will go again to the first animation and start again the first animation. And now we want to create here our last animation, which is here changing the form of our widget. You can see that it is changing the size and also here the roundness of our container. And this is what we want to create right now. Now I have created here a transform box widget and we go first of all to our state. And here we create a single ticker provider state mixin like before. Then we add here an animation controller and we also create here two animations because this time we have two animations, a size animation and also this radius animation, which is then changing the roundness of our shape. And then we create here our init state method and create here again a controller and call here repeat like before. And our animation will take this time two seconds. And after it, we simply create a curved animation, what we also did before. So we simply put here a controller inside of this curved animation. And then we later have a curved animation instead of a linear animation. Now let's create these both animations, the size animation and the radius animation. And we start here with the size animation. And we want to start here by a size of 50. 
and then we want to end later at the 250 pixels in size of our container. Then you simply call here again animate and put here the curved animation inside. Now we also want to create the radius animation and here we simply create a border radius screen and then you can set here the roundness of your container which we create later and it starts here at a rounded level and then it is later less rounded. However, if you want to have no roundness at all, you can also put here zero inside. And after it, you call again this animate and put here the curved animation inside. And by the way, if you don't like this curved animation and you want to have a linear animation, then you simply put here the controller instead inside, then you also don't need this field here. And like before, we also call the dispose method to actually clean everything up. And here we simply dispose our animation controller. And now we go over to our build method. In the build method, we simply create again our animated builder. And inside of our animation, we put this time our controller inside because we have here two animations. And therefore we put here simply our controller inside and not this size animation or the radius animation. And then we create here our builder and then we create here our container and here we want to animate first of all the size of our container. So we put here the width and height to size animation dot value and this will then return here the size animation and this will give us here value between 50 and 250 pixels. And this is then going here inside so we have here every time a width and height of 50 or we have later at some stage 250 pixels here inside. Let's also change the shape and the color of our container. So first of all, we set here a color of green and we will never change this color. And we also set here the border radius and this is the roundness of our container. And here we simply put this radius animation inside, which will us give then a value of border radius 60 or 16 or something in between. Then you need to hot restart your application and you see he's doing this animation from 50 pixels initially in size to 250 in the end, like now, now it's 250. And also the radius is changing. So in the beginning it is rounded completely and then we have here at the end a little bit roundness. And like I showed you before, you also can put here a zero inside, then you have later here at the end a total square. So let's hot restart and you see we have here now a completely square and it is not rounded at the end. And as a hint, Invoice Ninja has built an app with Flutter for managing invoices and this Flutter app is open source and you can check it out, this app and also the source code on GitHub. Hello everyone, thank you so much for watching this video. Please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel here to get the latest news about Flutter and see you soon, bye.